Let's assume that we all care about everybody, that we want everyone to get the best health care possible, that we just have different ways to do it, and I will argue, of course, that the facts are on my side, but I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Question of the day. Listen, I know we have a lot of uh, former Bernie supporters here uh, on our YouTube channel. Let me ask you, what's your position on Medicare for All, or at least how would you like to see our healthcare system changed, fixed? I think we all agree that it's, that it's flawed. Sure. And I certainly don't think that there are unreasonable proposals from the left when they talk about fixing it. I just think that they're based on inaccurate data. So yeah. this is the lead in here. All of the candidates, except for Joe Biden, <laughs> as, far as, I, as far as I know, uh, <laughs> on the DNC platform, are supporting a Medicare for All or equivalent plan. I believe we do need to move in the direction of a Medicare for all system. And we figure out how to do Medicare for all in a way that makes sure that we're going to get 100 percent coverage in this country at the lowest possible cost for everyone. I believe in a health care system Three claps. that guarantees right. health care <laughs> for all people. See, that's why I don't want the lighting too bright in this studio. Which is how <laughs> Medicare I see. for all is. Let me just tell you where I am. Let's okay. tell you where I am. All right. Where I are support you? Medicare for all. Now, see, you oh. see when we're in the studio and I'm like, the lights are close mm -hmm. and they get really bright. You yeah. look like, it looks like a ghost. It turns into <laughs> like a ghost. <laughs> like a ghost. All right. So <laughs> before we get to Medicare for all, the, the, the left invariably, they're going to point to a few key arguments. This is what someone yeah. needs to understand. This, this is kind of rebuttal. We've done, uh, we've talked about Canadian healthcare systems in a lot of other countries, but specifically Medicare for all. They're going to point to a couple of main uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. That it's cheaper, first off, in the long term than our current private insurance plan. It would be right. sort of 30 something trillion versus 50 something trillion dollars. And then they say that it will uh, create better outcomes. So that it's cheaper, better outcomes. They base the better outcomes generally on life expectancy, infant mortality, subjective polling data. That's why they always yeah. talk about how popular mm -hmm. their plan is. None of those claims okay, are objectively accurate. So let's go to the first claim that it would save us money while increasing quality. This is how much of that spending in each country is private and how much is public. Here's what's amazing. Sorry, I should have given you a heads up that's spending on, ah, yeah. on programs like Medicaid and Medicare and the VA, oh. our versions of socialized medicine, it's about the same size as these other countries. These countries where the government runs the whole healthcare system. And then there's our private spending. It's the private insurance system that makes healthcare in America so expensive. I mean, first of all, I can't speak to your experience, but overall, the healthcare systems of these countries are quite high quality. Overall, they have higher life expectancies than we do. Overall, these nations are better results. In fact, in the UK, people love their healthcare system. It's like a national religion. This is always what they say. They go to subjective point. They like their healthcare system. Okay, first off, they're talking primarily about costs there. Yes, a lot of things would save us money. Like reusing needles doesn't mean that it's necessarily <laughs> better quality of care. Wouldn't that be idea. great. Bad idea. So, and this is really important because your worldview will determine how you look at solving the problem of healthcare in yeah. the United States. It does need to be fixed. It, it is a problem system. But if your worldview is primarily predicated on the idea of cheap, and that's what you see them talking about, mm -hmm. getting it as cheap as other countries, okay, fine. But that's different from quality. Right. If you have mm -hmm. a worldview that requires you to examine a system and say, how can we get the best quality healthcare, uh, which benefits not only Americans but the rest of the world. So yeah. when they say that the United States has terrible uh, you know, health care, people who are Medicare for all opponents, yeah. uh, proponents, sorry, they uh, usually point to two studies. First is a World Health Organization report uh, that it, it ranked the United States 37th in health care. <laughs> okay, but uh, here, here's something that people need to understand about that, that, uh, that, <laughs> that ranking system. <laughs> they put us far behind social, uh, socialized systems, not just like Canada and the UK, we're behind Saudi Arabia and Colombia. <laughs> and just so you know, we're right neck and neck Sounds with accurate. Slovenia and Cuba. So you have to ask yourself, Cuba. hold on a second, <laughs> there's a wider gap between how good Canada's system is to the United States than the United States, what? and the next two on the list are, are Slovenia and Cuba? That's because <laughs> these disproportionately weigh people's subjective polling mm. standards. Yeah. Do you like your health care plan, which has no bearing on the reality of the quality of their health care. This is, again, it, it weighs more heavily how people, what people think of their healthcare. So, for example, yeah. someone who has a sack lunch that's free from the government and consists of Wonder Bread and bologna, right? They might be more satisfied with that sack lunch than somebody who's paid for their own where they have organic right. produce, meat and, you know, lean meats and yeah. fruits and vegetables. They go, well, you know what? I paid for, I paid top dollar for this and the steak's kind of stringy where someone's going, I love my bologna and Wonder Bread. It right. doesn't mean that it's a healthier yeah. lunch. Right. Yeah. The second study they point to is a Commonwealth study that, right, it's a little bit more recent. Uh, they studied 11 of the top nations as far yeah. as healthcare. Uh, and out of 11, they ranked the United States Number 11. Jerks. Uh, number one was the UK. Gosh. Okay? This is important for people yeah. like to understand. Yeah. Uh, and if, you're yeah. not, if you're not confused yet, the UK was 18th in the WHO study. Right. And they're number one in this one. 
What? Well, the, the stats, again, the <laughs> stats in World Health they don't really have much to do with health care. So right. let's go through this when we're talking about objective data. Life expectancy, also, again, they point to life expectancy infant mortality rate, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, again, we've gone through the polling data. We know that polling, Cubans are as happy with their health care in Slovenians <laughs> as the United States. I yeah. don't think that's okay. the metric that we should use. So they go to life expectancy. Right. Life expectancy isn't directly tied to quality of health care, but also self-care, okay? Right. We have a yeah. much higher obesity rate here in the United States uh, and a much, a much more diverse demographic than, yeah. say, people who are about all the same height, size in a place like Norway with the population yeah. of Rhode Island, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, the, uh, oh, something else, World Health Organization, they put a lot of weight on disability-adjusted life years. What does yeah. that mean? It means it completely ignores countries that keep disabled people alive longer, like the right. United States. Infant mm. mortality, that's usually, me- that's actually measured yeah. differently across different countries, like we've talked about with violent crime rates. We yeah. actually count infant deaths in the United States, which would not be registered in other countries because of our higher standards of health care. So, in other words, countries that don't count premature baby deaths, we actually do when you compare the two. That's the objective data they use. There's a reason they go to life expectancy and to infant mortality and then go to these two studies primarily. Watch it when you watch pro-Medicare for all uh, videos out there in segments and tell me that's not what they do. If we do some standardized comparisons, objective numbers, this is one thing that's funny from the left. They go, if you look at facts, okay, let's look at facts. Um, (laughs) Let's do it. Compare numbers, United States, UK, Canada, since UK was rated number one, do they actually offer better quality care? It's not even close, okay? We have over nine times the MRI machines of Canada, for example. Nine. We like to okay? collect them. That's the empirical. I can give you the anecdotal. My mom is going to have to wait one year and a half for yeah. an MRI because she ruptured a disc. But that's what they call in Canada elective, along with oh, serious oh, dermatology, yeah. neurology. That's another yeah. thing we'll get to in a second. I waited 15 minutes, by the way, for yes, the MRI. Yes, I know. I, I literally know. walked in, because got it, Because of evil left. private yeah. insurance companies. By the way, you're likely to <laughs> dying from uh, prostate cancer, breast cancer, myriad terminal illnesses doubled. That rate is doubled wow. if you live in the UK, New Jeez. Zealand, Germany, and Canada compared to the United States. And this is something too, and they say, teeth. why if you if you don't support socialized health care, why don't you care about the 40 something thousand people who die without access to care? Yeah. Well, why don't you care about the 100% increase in women who will die of breast cancer? Well, I can play that game too. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, assume yeah. that you care, assume that I care. We don't want people dying. We don't want people sick. We just have different solutions to these problems. Yeah. If you look at death rates specifically among hospital patients, let's go to the old number one ranked UK, four times as likely to die in a, a oh. number one ranked UK hospital in the United <laughs> States. Yikes. If you have a terminal illness Yikes. in a UK hospital, it goes up to like six or seven times that compared Jeez. to the United States. Stay home. Something else. <laughs> yes, we spend a lot more on health care, but we are the number one worldwide country in the creation of new drugs yep. and publication of uh, medical research papers. Again, it's not even close if, we are, if we're including that in the data, if we're including the quality and new drugs and how much we benefit the rest of the world, just like paying a disproportionate amount in tomato. You're welcome. I don't know that they're ignoring the numbers or if it's just given to them by AIDS, because it is interesting to me if you go, well, hold on a second, Bernie, hold on a second, Elizabeth Warren, hold on a, a second, every single leftist host out there, you right away go to life expectancy and infant mortality. What if you go to survival rates of terminal illnesses and cancers? Yeah. Hmm. What if you go to your likelihood of dying in a hospital? What if you go to wait times? Do they not know that? Yeah. I don't, I'm going to assume that their motives are altruistic and just like Barack Obama and all of these people with the pay gap, they don't have access to Google and or Bing at a local public library. Their next claim <laughs> Y'all is um, done it, okay? <laughs> something. web crawler. Another claim they make, Medicare is actually more efficient than private insurance and they specifically talk about when you look at the percentage of revenue spent on privatized health care right. uh, and administrative costs versus what we would have with Medicare for All. Private insurance companies in this country spend between 12 and 18 percent on administration costs. The cost of administering the Medicare program, a very popular program <laughs> that works well for our seniors, <laughs> is 2 percent. It's very popular. We can uh, save approximately $500 billion dollars a year just an administration cost. Okay, who gives a rat's ass? Listen, if we're just talking about numbers and we're talking about what's more effective and what's a higher quality of care, a very popular platform, what, what does that matter? Popular. This is one thing, trust too, by the me, way, they me. can use the exact popular. same argument I've heard from the left. They go, people talk about how they don't want socialized health care. Do you know what the most popular health care system is in the United States? The mo- you know, when people are polled? The VA. Okay, I can use that exact same argument and just say it yeah. another way. To give you an idea as to how irrelevant popularity is in the face of quality, do you know what the number one rated most popular system in healthcare insurance would be in the United States? The VA. <laughs> yeah, the one that's complained about we yeah, the most. We all know that it's broken. Uh, By the way, yes. hit the notification bell. Bookmark this page on YouTube because apparently notifications don't go out to everybody. Of course, join up yeah. Lotter with Crowder. I said of course. Of, of course, join up. <laughs> Lotter with Crowder.com slash mod club uh, and on iTunes. So listen, it's true, okay? Private insurance insane regulations, yeah, government red tape, crazy. a lot of administrative expenses. Yeah. It would be disingenuous for anyone to go out there and say that that is not the case. 
That being said, it is an inaccurate comparison when you're saying, okay, this is the cost of private insurance and these are the overhead costs. And you compare it to current Medicare because you're talking about a plan that would expand Medicare to everybody. Yeah. Couple of th- Let's ignore the fact that Medicare is basically insolvent and there are actually fewer doctors <laughs> than ever except the Medicare. Mm. One in five, okay, Ooh. refusing any new Medicare that's patients big. at all. Let's just assume <laughs> that that's all hunky-dory, okay? If you compare yeah. the uh, administrative expenses, Medicare, Okay, it's, it's not the same because p- patients over 65, they spend far more overall on healthcare. The administrative yeah. cost is a much smaller percentage spent on healthcare. When you expand that to everybody, you're going to have some very different numbers. This is why actually uh, left-leaning political effect, they rated this argument half true. Yeah, I'm surprised about that. And so this is <laughs> wow, because people understand that administrative spending, <laughs> half it's different, for example, than uh, bureaucracy in the government. So administrative spending, yeah, yeah. for example, in uh, private healthcare plans and insurance, they actually sometimes are spent uh, a lot of these costs to reduce costs overall. Sometimes when you look at cost efficiencies, that requires administrative processes, and that's why you actually have a more efficient program with privatized healthcare. Doesn't mean that it's the best, right. doesn't mean that it's, it's flawless, that's not what I'm saying, but again, we need to compare the numbers. There needs to be more of an apples to apples comparison, not apples to crazy socialist propaganda. This also brings us to something else where they constantly say, I don't understand why the United States, the richest country in the world, is the only country that doesn't have some kind of a universal or socialized healthcare system. Well, hold on a second, you can't be- moan the fact that we're the wealthiest country in the world and we're the only country that doesn't have this kind of... Yeah. That's how we got that way. It's like saying, <laughs> we are the only country right. in the world that, according to Berkeley, 70% of drugs and published medical research papers come from this country, and we can't get a socialized system like everybody else who's the remaining 30%. That's all countries. Well, yeah, Gene, why do you think that's the case? <laughs> How do you think we got so wealthy? How do you think yeah. we got to this kind of innovation? All right, another claim that they make, the United States has uh, more uninsured people than any other countries. Well, oh, okay, yeah. sure, but the uninsured number is misleading. It's very misleading. It includes illegal immigrants, by the way, who yeah. pay nothing. You know why they pay nothing? Because they could go into an ER, there's no way to track them, that's what they use for their care. It's not necessarily preventative like care, yeah. but if you have a two by four <laughs> nailed to the back of your skull from working a construction site, you know what? You'll take that for free all day long and twice yeah. on Sunday. Uh, and by the way, there are a lot of people who choose not to purchase insurance. In fact, actually, studies have shown that uh, sometimes there's an increase in total number of uninsured people as a result yeah. of people with above average income just opting to go uninsured. That's why they had to instate a penalty while the actual number of uninsured poor people goes up. Right. So that's important to note. By the way, everyone here at Lotto Crowder, Uninsured. We use, a, we use a health sharing service, <laughs> yeah. which yeah. numbers in the seven figures, which would not be qualified as insurance. It's a health sharing program, which actually covers you much better than most insurance. So these statistics aren't everything that uh, people believe them to be. To the left, they'll say, again, these people, this is very important. They'll say it's less expensive and higher quality of care. Say, okay, tell me how it's higher quality of care in, let's say, the United, uh, United Kingdom or in Canada. Don't use infant mortality or life expectancy. Go. <laughs> Go. There's nothing yeah, else. Exactly. There's yeah. nothing You're else. You're screwed. <laughs> there absolutely is nothing else. So that that's important to note because they'll say we're right on facts and they really cherry pick probably the most irrelevant facts, certainly yeah. the least comparable facts. Uh, okay, what else do we have here? Oh, another claim. That's right, I forgot. Um, medical bankruptcies. You hear this a lot. Oh, yeah. They, they, yeah. they talk about how two-thirds of bankruptcies in the United States are caused by, this is, this is parroted a lot right now, by medical bills. Two-thirds of all the bankruptcies today in the United States are due to medical issues, medical costs. No. <laughs> no. That's just a flat no. That's just, that's just a no. Hard that's pass. untrue. This is important. People say, I understand because you can tweak data to, to, to make it sort of match your narrative. And that's yeah. why I say you have to determine your worldview first. Do you want to focus primarily on quality of care and innovation and the best health care? Do you want to focus on giving everybody access to a crap sandwich? <laughs> Studies have shown repeatedly the entire concept of medical bankruptcy. It's based on a statistical fallacy. Yeah. Okay. This assumed that bankruptcy was caused by medical bills if the individual just so happened to have experienced medical debt at some point prior. And how often do you love to hear the sort of the leftist pseudo uh, intellectuals now say, correlation doesn't equal causation because it's the first thing they learned in Humanities 101 and Philosophy. Well, guess what? In this case, it's actually true, mister. You're going on next to the flying spaghetti monster. I see where you're going with this. When they looked for correlation, the overwhelming majority of people who experienced significant medical debt, okay, they did not declare bankruptcy. Huh. 
So you're just saying, well, if someone Seems goes relevant. if someone goes bankrupt and they had, yeah, they're they're more likely to have had a medical debt incurred. Well, absolutely. But then if you look at the vast majority of people who did have some kind of medical debt, they didn't go bankrupt. This yeah. is the perfect example of correlation is not equal causation. It's like ah, if you look at uh, uh, 60 percent of serial killers, they all ate Apple Jacks. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it the caused last two oh, weeks. No. It so was caused by Apple so, Jacks. So you know, uh, Kellogg's. <laughs> Ted Bundy. We think that <laughs> just like fire, just like Ruger I should be liable for the oh mass shooting, we think that Applejack should be liable for Ted Bundy and or uh, Gacy. <laughs> More money, please. If you go and watch uh, Bernie Sanders interviews, you can see him at one point. They say, well, what about people, you know, for example, who might not live the healthiest lifestyles? Do we have any yeah. kind of exceptions when we're talking about Medicare for all? And he goes, oh, no, because then at that point, you might have someone who's slightly chubby. We're not going to play that game. He goes, what about people? And this is an actual interview with CBS. I don't have it here Seriously? ready. He goes, well, what about people who smoke? We're going to try and get them off of that habit. And he starts, yeah. hold on a second. What if they don't want to? Right. You can't say no under Medicare for all, and of course, no. sky, uh, costs will skyrocket. So oh, yeah. even if you, the numbers that we have now, hopefully we've illuminated them for you, they'll only get worse if you throw everybody onto a Medicare-like plan. Yeah. And if so, even right now, if you only look at costs, it's still a wash. And here is something that I think is under, uh, important. People talk about doctors, okay? Yeah. First, do no harm. A doctor is not supposed to go in and put you on the most aggressive treatment possible. A doctor is supposed to go in and do no harm first and see what the minimum effective dose is for whatever treatment they're giving you. That's what we need to start with with our current healthcare system. People, they're, they're against this idea of incrementalism. Well, what if incremental solutions would actually create a world of difference? For example, yeah. opening up insurance across state lines, tort reform, mm -hmm. allowing insurance companies to create incentives for people to be healthy and rewarding that, just like we do yeah. with car insurance, right? Right? Yeah. As opposed yeah. to punishing people who don't get insurance, as opposed to punishing insurance companies that say you live on a diet of ringdings, funyuns, and fried Oreos, we say you have to accept everybody. And by the way, we're gonna, we're not going to put caps on premiums. This is a, this has been a yeah. giant kickback to the insurance industry. But I do want to say something here. What bothers me most about this, and if you want to look at people who are being intellectually dishonest, the people who say, ah, oh, these people don't even believe what they say on the right, and they don't care if you die, and they don't have any facts, they don't even believe yeah. their own horse crap. You hear people. In the left saying this, let me tell you something. I think our healthcare system is broken. Okay, I think it's something that needs uh, so that needs some some solutions yeah. thrown at it at least. But I don't think that it's unreasonable for the left to look at our current system uh, and say, you know what? W what about Medicare for all? I think it's wrong. I don't think it's unreasonable to, for people to look for radical solutions in the face yeah. of a system that we all experience and we yeah. all realize is broken. So I'm not going to assume that all of these people are lying to you, that all of these people are making data up, or that they're selectively omitting facts that illuminate the picture most clearly. What I will say is I understand why people are looking for solutions, uh, and I don't think that it is ill-founded to look to examples like you see with other countries. The devil is in the details. Yeah. And what really bothers me is when these people say, well, hold, why don't you care about dead people? Why don't you care about the people who are uninsured? That is one of those uh, kinds of arguments that stops the conversation before it begins. Just yeah. like calling somebody a racist, sexist, homophobe, transphobe. You see yeah. this coming exclusively from the left. You don't see the right saying, hey, these people want to kill all of you. They don't care about the 100% the, the increase of women dying of prostate cancer and breast cancer. We say, you know what? Listen, we believe in the highest quality of care. We believe that we have the best healthcare system in the world and we need to fix it. And we see that you have a different solution and we think that it is incorrect. Why don't you care about the people who will be killed? Why don't you care about the people who will be sick? Why don't you care about the millions upon millions of people who will likely die if we don't continue with a kind of system that provides some sort of profit incentive to create and develop new drugs. Why don't you? Get, we can all play that game. Yeah. Let's assume that we all care about everybody, that we want everyone to get the best health care possible, and we just have different ways to do it. And I will argue, of course, that the facts are on my side, but I'm not a doctor. Hey there, if you like this video, subscribe or click one of these videos playing in a box. You know what? Hit the notification bell because subscriptions don't really mean anything anymore, especially if you're not 18 or older, at the very least, logged into YouTube as 18 or older, because sometimes people are 25, but they don't know how to use the YouTube system properly, and then you never, just hit the notification bell, or you hate yourself.